uh, darkest era of the port history is the uh, era from 2015 to 2020. What are your personal goals for um, the SLPA? We realize that we have a serious problem of capacity here in Colombo port. Now it is 100% uh, port authority is going to operate the eastern terminal. According to reports, the port has about 9,000 plus workers. Uh, do you consider that overstaffed or do you think that you have just enough to run the operation? Actually, we have not come to the final agreement about the western terminal yet. That's only a suggestion at the approval given by the cabinet. So are we heading into the third uh, golden era of uh, Ports Authority? So when other people become abnormal, we have become normal. That's how the military works. Uh, there is a serious issue here in this country. There is volatility all over, the complexity all over, uncertainty all over, and ambiguities, discipline have gone below zero. So that also brings the question that there's a lot of criticism about military people being um, appointed to certain roles and you were one of the first who was appointed in 2019. Battlefield is like a meditation center for a soldier. You always focus on one point. It is not the fault of the soldier. It is the fault of people. It's fault of fault of leaders, fault of uh, intellectuals, fault of uh, everybody in the country. General Ratnayaka, thank you very much for joining us. Um, so I'm going to start off with the question that is very much a topic at the moment, the question of the East Container Terminal. Uh, for the benefit of our viewers, uh, the East Container Terminal was an agreement or the operation of the East Container Terminal was an agreement that was between the Ports Authority, Japan and India. India. Okay, so Sri Lanka was supposed to retain 51%, Japan and India 49%. Um, because of trade union action and a lot of uh, pressure in the last week, um, the government of Sri Lanka decided to withdraw from the agreement and we will now, the Ports Authority will be now managing it 100%. Absolutely. Um, at the same time, we hear that the Western Terminal now, or the Western Container Terminal, uh, will be also managed in an agreement between India and Sri Lanka and maybe a third country. My question is, what is the difference between these two agreements? Yeah, actually we have not come to the final agreement about the Western Terminal yet. That's only a suggestion at the approval given by the cabinet. If you uh, look at this, um, if I may try to explain this like this, uh, the viewers will not understand. If you can go back to the origin of this whole thing, that's uh, I think important. If you can give me about two, three minutes, I can explain okay. the whole thing, how we started and all that. So after 97 years of port uh, industry here in Sri Lanka, the southern port was uh, developed by the pre uh, previous, uh, that the government of Mr. Mahindra Rajapaksa, in, uh, from, which was from 19, uh, so rather, uh, 2005 to 2015 government developed the southern port. That's, uh, we developed the southern uh, uh, port, uh, that's the breakwater was developed, that's about six and a half kilometers long, was developed within four years, and then three terminals to be developed within that. So the first one, uh, with the development of the uh, breakwater started, uh, is called CIC Colombo International uh, Container Terminal. Basically, it's done by, the, by a Chinese company and it is now fully operational for us almost five years now, or rather uh, seven, eight years now. Okay. Then, um, then the second terminal is the one that we are uh, in the discussion, Eastern Terminal. So during that time uh, <coughs> itself, in 2012 or 13, uh, rather 12, 13, the Port Authority started uh, building that and about uh, 20% of the, uh, the uh, construction is being completed. So um, basically, there were three. There are three terminals in the southern port. That's namely uh, Western Terminal, Eastern Terminal, and the uh, Southern Terminal called Colombo International uh, Container Terminal. Its short form is CICT. Right now, CICT is fully operational. ECT, uh, one that I explained, and the, the Western Terminal is just water only. So, uh, when uh, we uh, took a loan from the Asian Development Bank, the Port Authority, uh, according to those agreements, uh, we have to uh, give two, uh, the agreement basically uh, is to uh, two terminals to be uh, given public, uh, go, uh, somewhat uh, 
uh, work on PPP basis, private-public partnership basis and one terminal to be constructed by the Ports Authority and operated by the Ports Authority. That has been the agreement. So, according to that, uh, that government uh, of Mr. Mahindra Rajabaksa gave uh, uh, open basic tender and got Chinese company to do the CICT. Then uh, Port Authority started the Eastern Terminal, which is the most advantage one to the Port Authority. And we st uh, Port Authority has started that. And 420 meters being completed out of 1,320 meters. And about 630 meters key wall being constructed. That's how it is. For last, uh, then uh, that government of Mr. Mahindra Rajapaksa, uh, at the final stage of that government in 2014, ordered the cranes and all other equipment for that uh, portion of the eastern terminal. But uh, when new government came in, uh, Mr. Arjun Ramatunga, being the minister, uh, cancelled that deal. So as a result, uh, or, or cancelled and thereafter they did not uh, reorder or do anything. For five years, nothing happened. No cranes were ordered, nothing uh, being constructed and go be went beyond, uh, nothing happened. So it's, uh, that's the uh, darkest era of the port history is the uh, era from 2015 to 2020. So, so when this, uh, this, this government of Mr. Gotabe Rajapaksa came in and we also came as uh, Chairman Ports Authority, we realized that we have a serious problem of capacity here in Colombo Port. Basically the port business if you look at, always you maintain about maximum 60-70% of capacity, or then you have to go uh, and develop uh, new uh, facilities. That's how it has been. Then only you retain business, you get new business and you have the flex flexibility of operating uh, a port when you have uh, facilities for about 60, 70 percent of capacity, that's how it is. Uh, but we went beyond the full capacity of Colombo port uh, for the last four or five years. This is a sad story. As a result, we had to expedite the Eastern Container Terminal and that's how we, uh, uh, what we wanted to do. And uh, during that five years, previous government has signed up agreements with India and Pakistan, as you all know, now India and Japan mm, uh, to construct the uh, Eastern Terminal. So when new government came, we wanted to get it back, but Indian, uh, since we had signed an international agreement, you can't break out from mm. such agreements immediately. So we were going through the process. So at the same time, we want to develop it uh, in double quick time. The discussions were taking a long period. Therefore, we came to this final agreement, uh, India and Japan to, together to do it. Yeah. On the basis that you just explained. So this is, uh, but actually it is not for the liking of the Port Authority. Uh, uh, not only the trade union, but the management, everybody wanted to do, uh, do it um, by ourselves. Mm. So, but the government on the other side had uh, difficulty. That's how that agreement, um, we were trying to do that way, the way that you explained. Yeah. So now, uh, everything has come back to normal. Now it is 100% uh, Port Authority is going to operate the Eastern Terminal. And the Western Terminal, uh, according to the Cabinet approval, uh, it will go to India and Japan um, on the basis of 85, uh, 15 uh, share basis on build, operate and transfer for 35 years it will mm. uh, be uh, given to those uh, countries or companies which are coming on the same basis like the CICT. Right. Yeah, that is how the history and little bit of uh, the current situation. Okay. So do you think the trade unions will have a problem even down the line about the same agreement with the same people? No, I don't think. Uh, uh, this has been the agreement according to the previous government, the previous going on public private partnership of the western terminal is no problem. Okay, so what's the problem, the percentages then? The percentage is also in the same line, uh, that's uh, all trade union, everybody is in the same line. Okay, uh, there was a committee report and the committee report said that the foreign companies uh, did, not, um, did not comply with certain um, terms and conditions. Do you know what these terms and conditions, that's why they dropped this um, this East container, Eastern yeah. Term. Uh, yeah, during the negotiation, I myself was there, but 
Uh, thus, um, when uh, we were negotiating for 5149 uh, 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 that uh, uh, basis, um, so we had to negotiate. So the negotiating party which came to negotiate, you know, we had our terms and conditions, mm. we gave it and certain conditions they were not in agreement like the payments, down payments, mm. early payments, initial payments and the payment system, royalty and all these areas they had issues and they had um, their concerns and the way that we were uh, to develop it, uh, the agreement uh, and we wanted it uh, fast, double quick time because mm. of the, the capacity problem. So we had uh, put some, if you delay it, uh, we wanted to have it and uh, we and, uh, from the Port Authority we wanted to um, operationalize, build and operate uh, the Eastern Terminal in double quick time mm. as I just told you the capacity issue, as, uh, for the capacity issue and um, we told them uh, you can't delay because uh, so we had some terms and conditions to make sure that they will when they start continuously they go within the stipulated time period. So to maintain that we had some terms and conditions so they had their concerns on those. Uh, that is why uh, finally we say uh, no um, to them. It didn't work out yeah. Yes. So now even with the western terminal because this is a private uh, public partnership Maybe not the same companies, right? It may be different companies from India and Japan that might yeah, work. So with far, us. We are, it's too early to yeah. decide. And those governments, will, according to the agreement signed, even the previous agreement, the governments of India and governments of Japan will nominate mm -hmm. uh, their operators by those countries. Then we have to negotiate with them if they have bad track records and all that. Still, we have provisions within the port um, uh, parameter or the legal framework. We can still, if they have uh, track records, and other, definitely country, Sri Lanka as a country will not uh, go with anybody who has any uh, track record, mm. bad track record or something like that, definitely it will not happen. Now India is kind of unhappy about all of this. Do you think India will come for the second round when it comes to the western terminal? You think they'll be okay to come for this, for, the, for that as well, since they're quite unhappy right now? No, definitely they will not be happy, but um, the governments to government uh, definitely um, our at, that is at actually not our level is at government mm. level government definitely uh, talk to India and they understand these issues and they basically a ground reality is re India being a democratic country definitely understand the uh, problems that the democratic country faces mm. so um, definitely um, I don't think India will be that uh, uh, kind of harsh uh, on these things and they will definitely understand this and our government is also present president and the government is quite capable of uh, negotiating all that I'm sure they will uh, negotiate it, it and settle uh, if there are any issues uh, but of course from my point of view my individual point the western terminal is a better deal mm. uh, not only the share basis western terminal is going to be the biggest terminal in the uh, in this part of the world so that's a bit uh, good deal mm -hmm. so rather than the eastern terminal so um, operational wise uh, commercial basis so the depth uh, mm -hmm. even for the futuristic manner if you look at uh, uh, western terminal it says uh, is uh, uh, western terminal has more advantages than the eastern terminal right i'm going to come back to the western terminal but just before then what is the response from japan because they've been very quiet and japan has uh, historically sort of uh, invested in our development um, and you know LRT we dropped out of the LRT just last year uh, do we know what their response is at the moment uh, so far no and we have we are going to have meetings with them this week and um, then we can see what their response is but uh, yeah, I mean I, I did not see any difficult uh, problem with them and initially because initial agreement in 2019 uh, of the previous government it says Japan to provide us a loan, mm. but when this government came, no, we said no to a loan, <coughs> and we wanted an investment coming in. So then there were some discussions going on, but finally, uh, Japan realized uh, that we are not uh, having provisions to have a big loan like that. Uh, so therefore, they agreed to come out, come with an investment. Okay. So this uh, <coughs> Japan and India and whatever the other party come in, they are together. So they have to uh, solve their problems and uh, to come to us together. Right, right. So therefore, uh, uh, that 
uh, because of that arrangement, Japanese uh, will not have a major issue. Okay. So Sri Lanka will, the Ports Authority will operate the East Container Terminal 100%. China is operating one. And uh, the third one, Western, we are going to, we are in discussions. And Ports Authority has the funds to be able to um, fully operationalize the East Container Terminal? Yeah, or definitely. Okay. We have the plans. Actually, we had the plans okay. earlier. So, all of a sudden, the plans, uh, <laughs> the cost uh, was changed. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, so, therefore, what um, uh, the, it is not. We, we have the capacity of bringing in, uh, generating funds, uh, what the funds we have, using them uh, and generating funds. Uh, we have the plan for that. Okay. I want to speak about you being at the helm of the SLPA. You, have, you were appointed in uh, December 2019. I think you have another year before you're uh, reinstated or your next uh, uh, next more challenge. Years. Two, uh, two more, more years. years, okay. Mm. What are your personal goals for um, the SLPA? Oh my God, um, a lot of transformation has to be done. So we have already planned all that and even today we were having a discussion about architectures and developers and all that. So whole day we spent in transforming the whole uh, port uh, system, mm. uh, it's a sewage thing. You know, Sri Lanka needs uh, transformation. The leader that we have is a person who is uh, looking for tram transformation. He's a person I see, I, I have a lot of um, um, experience with him. I know that what kind of a leader he is and he needs to transform because Sri Lanka needs transformation. He had that mature uh, knowledge based maturity. Yeah. So, rarely we get a leader like that. So, I'm sure he will transform this. With that uh, tra national transformation, we uh, bring it back, we bring it into the port. We need a lot of transformation, all aspects, because now we have got the Eastern Terminal, but unless we change the culture here in the port, he will not be able to go. And I'm being the chairman of the port for one year, I have realized the uh, systems that we have had to be changed the legal system, the operational system, the regulations. There are so many obstacles um, when you see a uh, past developing because port business is uh, an international business. It's very competitive today. Uh, therefore, we to be uh, among the top competitors, we are a hub nation. We are located right in the center. We have a huge demand. Even if you expand uh, into another um, two, three terminals, we will have definitely a business. So in order to retain those businesses, bring in those businesses, we need to compete with other people. In order to do compete, uh, we have to be in equal terms with mm -hmm. other private companies. Mm -hmm. So so therefore, we need a lot of transformation in that. Then the mindset, uh, the attitude change is a serious requirement of uh, most of our government servants here. So these are the things that we have taken in factor uh, into our uh, transformation. So it's not a change, but complete transformation we have to do. Right. So we have uh, discussed all that, we have planned, we have developed those plans. Now it is time to implement an Eastern Terminal problem and the Corona issue prevented us. Now we are working with Corona, we are quite used to this new normalcy. So I'm hope, uh, I'm, I'm very pretty sure within next, this year will be a year of transformation okay. uh, in the port of, uh, history of Sri Lanka port. Of the port. Okay, I have three questions yes, uh, based please. on that. Uh, one is, um, according to reports, the port has about 9,000 plus workers. Yeah. Uh, do you consider that overstaffed or do you think that you have just enough to run the operation? Because we were talking about just now being more efficient and stuff like that. How would you uh, deal with this? Kind yeah, of we are terribly overstaffed. Actually, uh, my experience is that if you can have about 3,000 uh, workers, uh, it is uh, more than enough to operate this. But successive governments, you know that we, due to this ad hoc systems, uh, system of recruitment, uh, all that uh, people having um, uh, recruiting people, but I am sure uh, 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 within about three foot, maximum 3,500 is enough to run this port and other ports mm. in uh, Sri Lanka total. But it is the other numbers, these are trained, skilled labor. Uh, skilled uh, workers, so we can use them for other things. We have there are so many other mm, connecting uh, new businesses that we are developing. Not only terminal operations, but uh, there are so many other new businesses we are discussing. There will be huge uh, logistic uh, businesses we are developing within this year. Mm -hmm. We are going to start all that. 
with the beginning of uh, uh, starting with western terminal eastern terminal yes there will be staff required for all that then um, the gold port is going to be developed trincomalee is going to be developed with that we can use the same staff at the same time we have other affiliated companies and port authority has uh, two three companies one company is uh, specially created to do outside uh, business outside sri lanka so but uh, unfortunately this was started by mr lalit atilan mandali uh, that time one of the golden eras of our port history we have two golden eras one is one that uh, 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 during the uh, Um, with uh, uh, at, on the, the leadership of Mr. Lalit Atul Abdullah, that was one era. Then the best era is uh, the one which was um, I mean, considered to be the period under uh, Mr. Mahindra Rajapaksa as the president, and like that. So these are the two golden eras. During those eras, in 1979 era, Mr. Lalit Atul started this company, uh, Colombo, <coughs> the port. Uh, management and consultancy services is to go outside sri lanka mm -hmm. like all other now if you look at singapore port the chinese ports chinese port they're right around the world mm -hmm. operating singapore has two arms one is to do the domestic one one is definitely fully committed to go outside and mm -hmm. operate with large number of ports around the world so that could have been the basis when he uh, thought of opening new companies and the ports are Uh, on kind of public private partnerships so uh, initially about 200 people have gone out of sri lanka to work on the port authority and uh, work but later uh, these companies are not doing anything now they are cleaning gold face and cleaning the uh, toilets of this uh, port authority like that they have come back to very primitive things but we want to get it back so this staff what i am saying the additional staff that you are questioning can be used to go out of sri lanka and operate terminals our, our people are quite capable quite skilled they are very good workers so we can take uh, businesses outside this is also another area that we are considering uh, seriously now so are we heading into the third uh, golden era of uh, port authority definitely this is going to be double golden era <laughs> Very good. Uh, okay, I have another question, which was about you mentioned COVID-19. So um, during the lockdown, uh, the port was still open. It was an entry point. How did you manage during that time? And also, you all just launched a new management plan for COVID-19 last month, I think. Oh yes. 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 When COVID-19 came initially, you know, Sri Lanka started uh, his, under His Excellency uh, a management system. and we were very successful in the first part and we port authority you know uh, we were the um, actually the uh, been the organization we are always dealing with outsiders we have uh, at any given time 15 to 20 ships here if uh, a ship carries about 20 people you know 3 400 people at any given time all foreigners coming from different directions right around the world so we were facing serious problems so we want to do, uh, initially the threat was from outside so we managed it exceptionally well uh, we developed a concept we implemented it we educated all our people we got the health ministry and everybody to come and help us so we developed a nice plan to, um, and um, we were very successful at the initial stage there were no interruption at all but um, in the, in october when the second wave came Mm, uh, still uh, we modified the plans and we did it but you know gampa district um, uh, was under lockdown position for about more than 3 4 months mm. so about 30% of our staff uh, port staff and affiliated organization staff about 30% uh, is from gampa district uh, it was locked down and we had issues mm. then come to blue mandal go more than uh, all peripheral mm. areas of the yeah. port is still the red areas mm. so we had serious issues then uh, there were large organizations small organization there are 24 organizations having their operations within the port and these are related uh, organizations so some of them um, first uh, came in with quite mm. so other organization came so finally it came to port uh, staff as well so then we had some trouble Yes. then um, uh, we have major three terminals all term terminal in different timings they got it uh, so we had some issues 
but uh, we developed the second um, system now with our doctors with our staff all three terminals and all other people who are working inside we all got together and developed a master plan so i think um, that's uh, uh, we managed to overcome the issue right. today there is no issue 24 7 we are working no interruptions uh, absolutely normal uh, the port operations Initially, for about two to three weeks, we had some issues in late in, uh, November, mm. uh, beginning of December like. So since then, we have no issues for the last two months uh, without any problem we are doing, uh, managing very well. So for that, we, um, as I told you, develop a new concept and the health ministry came and inspected it and they said, this is the best program in the country. So we are very happy to uh, announce that. Yeah. So we are doing 30 trade unions okay, here. That's a lot. So, uh, I mean, quite. Um, I have no experience with other trade unions, but uh, when I see in the papers and things like that, our trade union are quite. Um, mm, I think it's kind of a balanced trade union. Okay. So they are not fighting. I have not seen um, after I came here for one year. I don't have much experience, but still, when I go into the history. They are not being that harsh on other things like demands. Mm. Uh, for this. They are being working together with the management. So even here, they, uh, mm, they were quite uh, understanding when this Eastern Container Terminal came also because they were standing on ground that we decided, uh, previous government. Uh, so uh, on those lines, they were fighting and they are quite rational. So. Mm. Uh, I requested don't do anything uh, away from the gates of the courts, yeah. but don't come inside okay. and don't uh, prevent uh, any interruptions in the working and the business. So they didn't, didn't at the last stage they uh, told us, but they want to do uh, work, uh, what do you call work to rule. Mm. So that's the only thing, but uh, that also did not only a one portion of the whole port operation uh, they were involved in. That way they were quite uh, understanding, so we have interactions, I'm fine, I'm happy and only thing having too many trade unions, I don't like, but <laughs> they are, that is their yeah. heart, uh, is, uh, no issue, yeah. but we work on plans and we tell them, um, so they are working together with the management, so I'm happy in that sense. Okay, on a personal note, you're a military man. Uh, how did, does your military training and upbringing help you in a, in a role like this? Yeah, oh my God, I'm enjoying it when you have volatility, uncertainty, complexity, <laughs> ambiguity, thus uh, we become normal. All right. So when other people become abnormal, we have become normal. Okay. That's how the military works. Okay. Military being trained, structured and equipped to be normal in situations when it is abnormal for other people. So that's how we are being groomed, trained, equipped. So here when you have this, all these kind of trade union actions and fighting and this and that, uh, it's, I'm enjoying it. Okay, yes. so that also brings the question that there's a lot of criticism about military people being um, appointed to certain roles and you were one of the first who was appointed in 2019. They have the freedom of telling anything but there's a serious issue here in this country. There's volatility all over, the complexity all over, uncertainty all over, and ambiguities, discipline have gone below zero. So in a situation like that, so you need some kind of um, you know, different approach. So I can understand as to why people don't like it because there's a huge uh, mafias, huge culture, um, unwanted uh, practices within the government organizations. We have to come out of this and port also to operate uh, as a hub port uh, in the world, uh, top port in the world, in, in, uh, to be competitive with other ports, we got to bring in new stuff, the best practices in the world you got to bring in. When you are trying to change something, it's not easy in Sri Lanka, you know. Mm. You got to have tolerance, patience. So all that um, we are being uh, groomed with all that. So um, it's a plus point for me to be a military officer to come and uh, handle all that. So my experience is quite uh, handy, um, coming in very much in handy. Yeah, interesting that you talk about patience and uh, things tolerance. like that. Because tolerance, yeah, because that's not something that is ordinarily linked with military. When people see a military, they think guns and um, war or violence. 
but you are talking about tolerance and patience which are other attributes I suppose that are uh, built in your training. So the fears that people have that the military is going to take over and all of that is completely unfounded in that case. Uh, we, 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 as I told you, we have that uh, broad understanding. It's because um, we always look at these things and when people start fighting and all that, if we don't have that tolerance, when everybody fail in a country, mm -hmm. the politicians, the priests, the clergy, uh, people like you, <laughs> the media, everybody fail, then go. Yeah, yeah. So then the go. When, the, when everybody uh, fail, who is given the responsibility of managing it? The military. So that's why we, we do things beyond the capacity, capability of average people. Right. So for, for to do something beyond the normal call of duty of people, soldiers, that endurance, how we are being trained, so structured, trained and equipped is another important thing that people must know. So we, uh, we, we never uh, get angry when someone is trying to make us Talk. angry. Yeah. No, no, we don't. Otherwise, if, when somebody is shouting at you, uh, shooting at you, mm. if you get angry, you die. Mm. So we, our five senses, we keep it very fully functional and with patience we go, keeping our mind free like in a uh, meditation mm. center, uh, battlefield is like a meditation center for a soldier. You always focus on one point. Right. So that's how a soldier, people have not understood who soldier and who, how he's been trained, how he's been groomed and what kind of uh, mindset he has. Mm. So, so I mean, we, we, I told you that when there's volatility, uncertainty, complexity, yeah. you know, we are very normal. Yes. So when people are making allegations, you know, they, they smile and tell you. <laughs> That's their job and we do. We know that they are failures. Yeah. The failures. Because of their failure only we are being taken onto the street. If this country has been doing very well, soldier wouldn't have been seen on the street. And in Singapore you don't see a soldier. Mm -hmm. In China you don't see a soldier. In any other developed country you don't see a soldier. That's how entire nation must get together and make sure that soldier lives only in barracks. And the day that soldier is living in barracks for a year, one, two, three, four, five, ten, fifteen years, the country will be developed. More and more soldiers you see on the street, that means that country will never be developed. Mm. That's the way that people must see. It is not the fault of the soldier, it is the fault of people, mm. it's fault of, fault of leaders, fault of uh, intellectuals, fault of uh, everybody in the country, you see soldier on the ground. Wow. Thank you so much. Uh, that was very informative and really opened our minds as well. And thank you for the for participating in this interview. And I wish you all the best for the third era, third golden era of the Ports Authority. Thank you very much for the opportunity, and I'm, I'm very happy. Thank you so much. All thank the you. Best to you. Welcome.